Hello friends, welcome to the session of statistics and uh, after uh, uh, having uh, studied the direct method, in this method we are going to find out the arithmetic mean of a given data, whether it is in, in the form of uh, discrete data or in a class interval form, we will be using something called assumed mean method, assumed mean method to find out the arithmetic mean of the data. Now why do we use this method is? In earlier days when we didn't have calculators and computers, it was, you know, and uh, the data, let's say the value, the variable values were quite large, then it would it would become very difficult and cumbersome to do calculations. So hence, st statisticians and mathematicians came up with a technique of reducing the, you know, calculation load by this uh, assumed, mean assumed mean method. So hence, let us understand what this assumed mean method is. Before that, uh, let us first have a recap of what was our direct method. So if you remember, our direct method of uh, finding the mean was x bar was given as summation fi xi divided by summation fi, right? So this was i is equal to 1 to n observations. Let us say we had i is equal to 1 to n observations. We had n observations in table like for example it was xi and there was fi and then we used to calculate xi fi or fi xi whichever way you want to call it and let us say this was x1 it was the frequency was f1 then x2 then the frequency was f2 x3 and the frequency was f3 and so on and so forth we had xn was having a frequency of fn and hence we calculated x1 f1 then x2 f2 multiplication of these two quantities x3 f3 and so on and so forth till xn fn correct and then we used to sum this column and we used to find out summation xi fi and this is from i is equal to 1 to n and this column also was summed up and it was called summation fi from i is equal to 1 to n and hence we used to get this particular relationship for mean of the data now what we are going to do is let us say if x these x's are quite large okay or even for that matter f1 is quite large then this multiplication became becomes very cumbersome right multiplying each one of the x's with the f becomes very very difficult so hence we came up with a technique so that we can reduce the magnitude of these values so that our calculation becomes easier. So that is what we use in assumed mean method. So what do we do? Let us see a table. So you can clearly see xi's are quite large, 240, 256, 300, 320, 350. And if we would have done the direct method, then we would have ended up with doing all these calculations and then finally summing it up. So it looks a little intimidating. So what I'm going to do is, I am going to subtract a constant number which is called the assumed mean which I have taken here as 300. Now uh, you can take any value of a here it's it's not necessary that one of the values of x size only have has to be taken as a. You can take anything which reduces your calculation load so it has to be balanced so that if you uh, take up a number let's say a thousand then again it becomes another big cumbersome multiplication uh, process. Why? Because if you subtract everything from 1000 or all these numbers uh, minus 1000, if you do, again, there will be big um, numbers. So instead of that, we take somewhat middle value, which is, which looks like it would, the mean would be somewhere uh, near there. So we take that value. So hence it is called assumed mean. So we are assuming that the mean is somewhere around 300. Okay. So, uh, and it could, it can be, you know, um, uh, you can find the value of assumed mean by just having a look on the data, the type of data. So if you see here, this is 240 to 350, it is varying. So somewhere around 300, the mean must lie. So hence, I am taking 300. And another reason of taking 300 is that, you know, um, subtracting any number uh, from 300 or subtracting 300 from any number will also be very easy to calculate. So if you can see now what I did, I subtracted this 300 that is my assumed mean through uh, from all the xi's so if you see 240 minus 300 we got minus 60 then minus 44 0 20 and 50 can you see one one of the values is 0 so hence now multiplication by 0 will also be easier 
Now this is called DIs. Yeah, the deviations from the individual x values. How? What is the difference between the individual x values and the assumed mean? So now if you see the numbers which you have achieved are relatively smaller than where we started. Right? So it is easier to multiply 60 with 7 than 240 with 7. Okay? So hence, now the next step is multiply these di's which you got with the corresponding frequency values. That is, minus 60 has to be multiplied with 7 here and so on and so forth. So if you do this, you will get these values. Then you will have to just sum them up. Sum D, summation di fi. So you will get a value of minus 112. And the formula for x bar is x bar is equal to assumed mean plus summation fi di divided by summation fi. Now the question arises, where do we get this formula from? So let us look at it. Now, if you see, what are we doing? We are saying xi is equal to, um, or, or rather, we are saying di, di is equal to nothing but xi minus assumed mean. That's what we have st stated here. Can you see this? di is equal to xi minus a. Isn't it? So hence I can say xi will be equal to a plus di just rearranging this equation. That means now what is x bar? Let us find out x bar. From our direct method we know x bar is summation fi xi i is equal to 1 to n divided by summation fi again from i is equal to 1 to n right now let us substitute this xi with whatever we have found out over here so i can say summation again i is equal to 1 to n and fi stays as it is and instead of xi i will write a plus di okay and then divide by summation fi from i is equal to 1 to n okay now there is a rule uh, friends that if you know uh, you can simplify this summation how so summation i is equal to 1 n you open the brackets and you write you can write f1 a plus sorry fi a and fi di okay this is within the summation and then summation i is equal to 1 to n fi now there's a rule that if summation a plus b is there okay so summation a let us say i is equal to 1 to n is same as summation a from i is equal to 1 to n plus summation b from i is equal to 1 to so i can distribute the summation yeah if you uh, are confused let us take an example so let us say i had summation let us take an example just to understand this so that it becomes clear for you just to understand this let us take an example how so let us say we had summation i is equal to 1 to n xi plus yi what does it mean according to the definition of summation it will be x1 plus y1 plus x2 plus y2 so i will vary next then x3 plus y3 so on and so forth till xn plus yn this is what is summation xi yi is now can't i club all x's together so x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus so on and so forth till xn plus y1 plus y2 plus y3 plus so on and so forth till y n right so the left hand left you know term here is nothing but summation x i from i is equal to 1 to n plus summation y i from i is equal to 1 to n so this proves this particular rule okay so if this rule is correct then let me just insert some space here yeah so now this was just to illustrate the rule of summation so hence now what i'll do is i will insert some more yeah now let us let us carry on from here so hence 
I can write this as summation i is equal to 1 to n f i a plus summation f i d i from i is equal to 1 to n divided by summation f i from i is equal to 1 to n. Now guys, a was a constant. This value is a constant. Now let us give me, let, let me give you another, another rule so another rule is rule is what is the rule uh, with the summation so summation let us say if you had uh x i into constant let us say c constant term okay and i is equal to 1 to n right so what will be this value this is nothing but x1 into c plus x2 into c plus x3 into c plus so on and so forth till xn into c so this will be nothing but you can take c common and you can write x1 plus x2 plus dot 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 till xn which can be written as c times summation x i i is equal to 1 till n so what do i mean i mean that if there is a constant term then it can be pulled out of summation sign so if you see here a is also a constant term so it can be very much pulled out of the summation sign so hence it can be written as a summation i is equal to 1 to n f i plus summation f i d i i is equal to 1 to n and this was whole divided by summation summation f i from i is equal to 1 to n now what we can do is What we can do is we can now split this fraction into two. So you can written as it can be written as summation a i is equal to 1 to n f i divided by summation i is equal to 1 to n f i plus summation f i d i divided by summation f i both from i equals to 1 to n and here also i equals to 1 to n okay so if you see this this term so these two are same same so i can cancel that right and this is not zero summation of fi is not zero so i can cancel it so it will become a plus summation fi di i is equal to 1 to n divided by summation i is equal to 1 to n fi so this is what the formula was all this was coming from where from here we started with x bar so x bar is now when we did all this calculation we saw x bar is so hence i can summarize here and write if you are doing assumed mean method so x bar will be assumed mean plus summation f i d i i is equal to 1 to n and then not whole divided by sorry this the second term divided by summation fi only yeah summation fi yeah from i is equal to 1 to n right so i have calculated the data in this table the mean of the data in this table and i have found out that using this formula i am getting 295.85 you can try with the direct method you will get the same result same mean will be obtained okay so this is what is called assumed mean method there is one more method called step deviation method which is a further step in in uh, in the direction of reducing the calculation complexity so we'll see that in the next session thanks guys